Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. Today we will talk about resistive voltage dividers. As the name implies, they are used to divide a voltage using resistors. There are also inductive voltage dividers that use inductors and capacitive voltage dividers that use capacitors, but they will be the subject of another video. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. GLC PCB is a company that makes excellent quality PCBs at an unbeatable price. You can order boards online in minutes. After registration, upload your Gerber files, select the PCB properties, select the payment method and place your order. Best price and quality for all your PCB needs. Here is the voltage divider. It is just two resistors in series. We apply voltage at the input and here we have the ground or negative connection. In these circumstances the voltage at the output is this value is our input voltage multiplied by the ratio of the resistors in this way. So we can divide the applied voltage in any fraction that we want. For example, if we have 10 volts at the input, we can have two volts here, which is the voltage at resistor two, and of course, the remaining 8 volts will be the voltage at resistor 1. How we arrive to this equation is really simple. We start from Ohm's law, voltage equals current times resistance. So our total voltage is the input voltage Vi and this equals the current times the total resistance, which is the sum of the two resistors. Remember, this is a series circuit, so the current I is the same in both resistors. From here, we can solve for the current and we obtain this value. Now, we can find the voltage at each resistor, again using Ohm's law, so voltage 1 in resistor 1 equals current times R1 and we obtain this value and voltage 2 which is our output voltage from the divider is current times resistor 2 and we obtain this equation which is what we give initially. Of course you can check that the sum of the voltages of the two resistors must be equal to the input voltage. You can do the little math here and verify that V2 plus V1 equals the input voltage. Here's our voltage divider on breadboard. This is the input voltage and here we will have the output voltage. And this is resistor 1 and resistor 2. Now let's measure the resistance values. R1 is 5.54 kilo ohms and R2 1.008 kilo ohms. This is the formula for the output voltage that we saw previously. Using an input voltage of 10 volts and with the values that we just measured for the resistors, we should obtain at the output 1.54 volts. Let's check it with the multimeter. I will apply 10 volts to the voltage divider and let's check the output voltage. And it is 1.54 54 volts as we calculated. This is of course the voltage in resistor 2. Let's check it directly. 
and the rest of the voltage is on the other resistor. Voltage dividers have multiple applications, for example, to measure high voltages. Normal multimeters can only measure up to 600 volts, but if we want to measure higher voltages, we cannot use them. So we can design our voltage divider to have an output voltage of 10% the input voltage in such a way that if we measure, for example, 80 volts at the output, we will know that the real voltage is 800 volts. However, they are not good for high power. You cannot ask uh, high values of current from them. They become impractical. The reason is the following. Imagine that you have a 12 volt battery but you need 6 volts with a current of 1 amp. So you can think of making a voltage divider using two 6 ohm resistors. So using ohm's law, current is voltage 12 volts divided by the total resistance 12 ohms and that will give you a current through the circuit of 1 amp. And since the resistors are equal, the voltage will divide between them 6 volts and 6 volts. So at the output we will have 6 volts at 1 amp, just what we need. However, when you look at the power dissipated by this circuit, we can see using the power formula, current squared times resistance, that the power is 12 watts. This is the power that we are wasting even without connecting any load to the circuit. 12 watts dissipated only by our resistors. So for this reason, voltage dividers are not used for power applications. There are more efficient ways of reducing the voltage. That's all for today. Many thanks for visiting my channel. I hope you liked the video. If you want to help me, please visit my Patreon page. See you in the next video.